I don't know what is in that chalice, but once you hear it, the ring of truth is beyond dispute. Find out why on this episode of Graphic Metal. Metalheads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. And today, we are giving our top picks for both April and May 2024 for the sector of thrash, groove, and sludge metal. We will be presenting these as they were released. So, let's get to it. The Search Won't Fall by Critical Defiance. We begin with an album that was actually released in late March, but it's too damn good not to bring it in. The production, it's not great. It will sound like an 80s thrash debut, think like The Legacy, but they make up for it and then some with crushing brand of classic thrash and push the envelope of creativity and even length. Three discs in for this newish band coming Villa Chile. I love, love the instrumentals. Helps break up the otherwise crushing intensity. And in general, they really understand the importance of having not all the songs be the same. Hell, Margarita, is one of the most beautiful, touching songs you will hear all year long. And yes, they are thrash, but this is just as punishing as death. And speaking of them, easily needed for fans of early death or Sepatura. The only thing holding this one back is this production. Otherwise, Graphic Metal gives this a rating of 88 Sentinels by Vulture, a thrash metal album released on April 12th. Am I listening to Annihilator's Alice in Hell? I mean, that's that's honestly the thought that first pops in my head when listening to this album. Also a newish band, in this case from Dortmund, Germany, with this being their fourth album. If you're a Jeff Waters fan, check this one out. Graphic Metal Rating gives it a 74. War, period, by Whores, period. A sludge, stonerish metal album released on April 19th. I had my eye on these gents for some time with their visibly simple graphical approach and a name that, well, let's be honest, it's kind of hard to forget, right? Uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, it's their sophomore release and they, they pretty much want to be the next helmet melvins or local h so if you're interested in interested in that you know style check it out it's all right graphic model rating gives it a 68 The Way Forward by Black Tusk, a sludge hardcore punk-ish album released on April 26. Feels like it's been a while, and sure enough, it, it, it has. It's been six years since TCBT. Them and Baronis kind of linked not because they are similar, 
but because they use they've they've used the same artist in the past uh, times and it to be honest it can be a little bit confusing on which album is from which band sometimes if you want energy tusk provides it though unfortunately on this one they they once again switch back to being just a straight up sludge metal band which is a bummer because for the first time uh it, it, we saw them be embrace like their punk side on TCBT and which I don't know I, I personally felt like that was when they were at their best I, I I've, and it was also a little more unique the sludge version of them is it's kind of boring and standard but it's not terrible graphic metal rating gives it a 65 tusk come on bring back the punk baby <laughs> The Deceivers by Death, a groove industrial death metal album released on May 3rd. This year already included some surprises. This is another, and boy, was it a gem. I already did my extensive review on this album upon release, so check that out. But a quick recap. This is an American groove industrial death metal band via Atlanta, Georgia. This was their fifth album, but first since 2010. And boy, are we glad they're back. Best identified as being an American version of Septic Flesh because of their particular unique technique of fusing classical and modern subgenres like death, groove, thrash together with a symphonic and industrial way this is an album that had me smiling all the way through i have been shocked by the poor reception i don't care i love it and it still remains my top pick for the groove thrash in the month of of may for fans of septic flesh Fle uh flesh god apocalypse Fear Factory, Shimura, Testament, Lamb of God, Pantera, Death, Morbid Angel, Carcass, Nothing More, Insomnium, more <laughs> you get the point. Uh, there's a bunch of, of bands that they that they kind of all kind of mold together, so to speak. So with that said, Graphic Metal emphatically green stamps this album with a score of 90. Uh, only because, you know my rule, I can't give an album higher than 90 if the album cover design is crap. And in this case, this one is. So, it's just a 90. From Hell, I Rise by Carrie King, a thrash metal album released on May 17th. Everyone knows this one, and it comes with mixed reactions. Go figure, a high-profile figure doing a solo album, and it comes with mixed reviews. Shocking. I stand on the more positive side, but that's... Not that surprising considering I love all the members that he tapped for this one. Mark Asugata is one of my favorite singers in all of thrash. Paul Bestoff is, I mean, he's been a workhorse for so many bands, it's kind of hard to keep track of. Phil Demel, underrated legend for sure. And Kyle Sanders, oh man. There's no words to describe how much I heart Kyle. Some of my all-time favorite albums he plays bass on, from uh, Screw Shadow of Doubt to Blood Simple's Red Harvest. And most importantly, and we'll get to why, Death Angel is one of my favorite bands. Another one of those thrash you know, metal bands that just never got the level of respect that they deserved. Which leads me to the unusual nature that despite only the singer coming uh, from that band, this project sounds without a doubt the most like Death Angel, even more so than even Slayer. 
if it if it wasn't for you know like literally looking at the album cover, I would assume honestly that this is a death a death angel album. Not sure how that happened, but I'm not complaining. Uh, uh, that is, I mean, I'm so because of this, I'm I'm biased, but yeah, I love it as as such. Graphic Bell rating gives it an 85. And Justa for All by Justa, a thrash metal, actually more specifically a crossover thrash metal album released on May 17th. Once you hear it, the ring of truth is beyond dispute. Back to back solo projects from prime icons in this case is Jamie Justa from Hatebreed. I was just talking about this with someone the other day on how Hatebreed is one of the most beloved metal acts ever. Have you ever noticed that no one seems to dislike them? I mean, that's that's groove metal for you, right? But but yeah, few few bands or Jamie for that matter has the rare ability to unite us all as one tribe as he can or they can. When they when they play live you understand why. Rick, I gotcha. <laughs> and it's it's damn it's a damn good thing that he is because I mean it, it was a bold decision to brand your latest solo album in complete honor of the legendary album and justice for all by Metallica. And real quick with regard regard to you know the the design uh an album cover you, you, you damn well know that it's an it's something that i would do right but i don't think i don't think that it makes a lot of sense for a new original solo album I mean, hear me out i i love it from an art project standpoint. Again, if, if graphic metal were doing it, that's fine. But the problem is because the decision to literally clone the album cover exactly as is, it screams that Jamie is just doing a Metallica cover. It does not tell anyone, you know, passing by and looking at it, oh wait, this is all new original material? And I would hate uh, for even one less person to not pick this up because of that reason. Because, man, this is, this is the finest beater on tap you have back there. This album speaks for itself. And I dare say that is the best crossover thrash album of all time. Old school to the bone. And it even comes with some great guest appearances with Chuck Billy of Testament on Armor, Scott Ian of Anthrax on RMPC, Phil Demo, who probably just basically, you know, walked in next door from while he's working on Carrie King, and Steve Souza of Exodus. Damn, I mean, you, both of you, you, you made it nearly impossible to decide which album was better and you, you had to release them on the same day. Uh, it's a it's a tough call, uh, but I gotta go with this one. It feel because it just feels a little bit more fresh. Graphic metal rating gives it an eighty eight. Deal in Steel by Reverend Hound, a power thrash metal album released on May 24th. Sophomore release for this band coming via Munich, Germany. And they want to show off their skills to the world. 
This is a guitar fan's dream. This album is dripping wet from the fingers of their twin guitarists in Thomas Myers and Sebastian Weinstock. With absolutely both of them just slaying on this album. <laughs> Wow, this album is on fire. What is extra special about this? It's sure, it's definitely inspired by Dio, Maiden, Priests, and etc. But they do a phenomenal job at you know forging their own way through the fire. It sounds sounds fresh. Hound kicks down the door, raises its steel mallet into the air with the, with the fire still glowing from the forging of fires the night before, and everyone runs in fear. This is an intimidating album. You listen to it, and the whole time, your mouth is just on the floor, just in awe over the sounds coming from your speakers. And if that wasn't enough, they won up the competition with their just marvelous sound structure, a song structure, craftsmanship, uh, allowing just the like right amount of time to build a song, but at the same time leaving room for yeah, that guitar wizardry. It's just it's it's a beautiful album. Graphic Mel rating gives it an eighty nine, and that was the list. Here are some other videos of ours and check back soon as we give our picks for the other subgenres of rock and metal for the months of April and May 2024 coming very very soon until then cheers and keep on rocking <laughs>